Hello, pantry stockers. Today, we're going to talk about how altitude impacts canning recipes. I'm Rebecca from StockingMyPantry.com. Now, first of all, let me say, if you don't know what your altitude is, don't worry, because we're going to get into how to find that out. But what I have up here on the screen is a one of my blog posts on my site, StockingMyPantry.com. And I have been actually blogging a lot more lately than posting content on YouTube. But I realized that you guys on YouTube might be missing out on some of those things. So I thought what I would do is create a video about this article, and I'll probably do that in the future as well. That way, both my blog readers and my YouTube subscribers or followers, people that find this on YouTube, will get that information as well. So now let's go ahead and get into how to adapt canning recipes based on your altitude. Okay, so I start off by saying when I first started canning, I had no idea that altitude actually impacts canning. And I so I just want to point that out to you. It's an important thing to know. And this applies to both pressure canning and water bath canning. So canning recipes are typically based on an altitude of less than 1,000 feet or 305 meters above sea level. So if you live in a lower altitude, you don't have to adapt canning recipes. So when you see a canning recipe in the ball book or other places, and, and most of the time this is going to be true in blog posts as well. I can't swear to that because obviously bloggers do what they do and you don't really know. But generally speaking, if you see a canning recipe, unless it specifies otherwise, it's going to be based on an altitude of less than a thousand feet. And by the way, if you don't yet know your altitude, don't worry because I'm going to get into that here in a little bit. So when you're in a higher altitude, water boils at a lower temperature. If you live in a high altitude, you might notice that you have to, for example, cook pasta longer than the direction, say, or if it says seven to nine minutes, you're going to be probably at the nine minute mark with when you're boiling pasta. And it takes longer because water boils at a lower temperature. So you have to make adjustments so that the food you're processing is exposed to enough heat long enough to kill microorganisms. So we're going to get into now how to adapt water bath canning recipes based on your altitude. And this pertains to high acid foods. So high acid foods are things that are most often fruit fits into the high acid food category. And with those, you can use water bath recipes. So if you're water bath canning at a thousand feet or higher, you need to adapt canning recipes by increasing time based on the following chart. Okay, so you can see that if you're a thousand to three thousand feet altitude, you're going to process the food that you're canning for an additional five minutes. Now, again, this pertains just to water bath canning of high acid foods. So what this means is that if you use a water bath recipe that calls for a 20 minute processing time and you live at an elevation of 1,650 feet, so you can see up here between 1,000 and 3,000 feet, uh, if so, that would be uh, the 1,650 feet would fall into this category here. You're going to process for an additional five minutes. So a 20 minute recipe, if you live at an elevation of 1,650 feet, you would process that recipe for 25 minutes, even though the recipe says to process for 20 minutes. Now, when I lived in Denver, I was at Denver is the mile high city, which is 5,280 feet. So when I lived there, I had to process water bath recipes for an additional 10 minutes. And that means a 20 minute recipe I would process for 30 minutes. OK, so hopefully that's clear. All right. Now we're going to talk about how you adapt pressure canning recipes based on altitude. And this is for low acid foods. Now, before I get into this, I want to make it clear that in spite of what some people claim, and then that, that includes things like, well, my granddaddy did something for 50 years and he never died. I want to make it clear that you cannot safely water bath low acid foods such as beans, meat, and most vegetables. 
Now that's a topic for another day, but I just wanted to put that out there in case you're ever tempted to water bath can low acid foods. Your family's health is simply not worth risking using a water bath canner to can low acid foods. Okay, so now that I have that out of the way, let's look at how to adapt pressure canning recipes when you live in an elevation 1,000 feet or 306 meters or higher. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, with water bath canning in high altitudes, you increase the amount of time you process your food. Now we're talking about pressure canning now, and with pressure canning, instead of increasing time, you increase pressure. Now note that the amount of pressure that you use depends on not just altitude, but on your type of canner. In the chart, you'll see that there's variations between whether you're using a pressure canner with a weighted gauge or a dial gauge. Okay, so now let's look at this chart a little bit more closely. I personally use a pressure canner with a weighted gauge, and I'm at an elevation of approximately 650 feet. So I use a 15 pound weight when pressure canning. Now let's look at the chart here. Again, there's the differentiation between zero to a thousand feet is 10 pounds of pressure with a weighted gauge or 11 pounds with a dial gauge. I'm at the 650 feet. So what I do falls into the second row here. And therefore I need to use 15 pounds of pressure with my pressure canner when I'm canning low acid foods. So in other words, when I'm canning meat or beans or green beans, vegetables, any of that type of thing, I use 15 pounds of pressure, okay? And so again, the amount of pressure that you use is gonna depend on the type of pressure you, can, you use, a weighted gauge or a dial gauge, and also your altitude, all right? So now let's talk about how to determine your altitude. So before I moved to where I currently live, which is in Hemet, California, I assumed that Hemet, being in Southern California, was a low elevation. I happen to be uh, born and raised in Long Beach, California, and that has an elevation of only 52 feet above sea level. And, you know, I'm not that far away now from where I grew up. But thankfully, I checked the elevation here before I started canning, and I was surprised to learn that Hemet is a relatively high altitude of 1,631 feet. Now, if I had assumed that Hemet was also a low elevation because it's not that far from where I grew up, I would be canning unsafely. However, knowing my altitude helped me to know that I need to water bath can recipes an additional five minutes, and when pressure canning, I need to use 15 pounds of pressure instead of 10. Now, one thing that I wanna make clear in case it was missed earlier is that with water bath canning, it impacts time and with pressure canning, it impacts the amount of pressure. So when you're pressure canning something, you don't add on time and increase the pressure. You just use the right amount of pressure. So in other words, with a pressure canning recipe, if it says 30 minutes, you can it for 30 minutes. You don't do it for 35 or 40 minutes or whatever the case may be, but you do adapt the amount of pressure based on your altitude. Time is not an issue with pressure canning. I mean, it's an issue in the sense that you follow the recipe and the safe canning guidelines, but you don't increase the amount of time on your recipe. You just increase the amount of pressure, okay? Now the question is, how do you know what your altitude is? because I've had people ask me that question. Sometimes in my videos, I say, well, now if you're in a high altitude or whatever, you need to adapt it. And they'll be like, well, how do I know? So the good news is it's super easy to determine your elevation. And the easiest way to do it is just with a simple Google or Bing search. And I have screenshots of what I searched in Bing and the results. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, so you can see here that um, I was using Bing, but you're gonna get the same results if you use Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine you like to use. And you can see that first I have here Long Beach, California elevation. And the results pop up 16 meters and 52 or 52 feet. Okay, so it gives it to you in both meters and feet. So whatever you're accustomed to, it'll work. Next, you can see that I searched 
Himmick, California elevation. And I see that that is 497 meters or 1,631 feet. So that is super easy. Put in the name of your city and state or province, whatever it may be, and the word elevation, and you're going to get the answer right there. Super easy. Okay, so what I recommend doing is to refer to the elevation chart as needed. And you can see that on the blog post, I have a little form that you can opt into my email list and you can get a free printable high altitude planning guide. You just have to put in your name and your email address and it's free, so don't worry about that. Um, it will add you to my email list, but you can always unsubscribe if you don't wanna stay on my list. And I put a link to the blog post in the description so that you can grab that if you would like. So I just wanted to show you very briefly what this printable is. Basically, it's a high altitude canning guide. I give you the basics of it. I give you the chart for water bath canning and also a chart for pressure canning. It's a two page uh, PDF that you can download. And then there's a place where you can write down your altitude and you can put, I need to add blank minutes, however many minutes it is for water bath canning. And I need to add, uh, do so many pounds of pressure for my elevation. The pounds of pressure for my elevation is blank. So what I recommend is that you print this off, you write your altitude, you write the minutes for water bath canning that you need to add, and then you also make note of the pounds of pressure that you need to use. And then you can stick this on your fridge or you know, in with your canning stuff, in a binder, however it is that you like to keep track of things. So anyway, be sure to check out the description with a link to this blog post so you can get this guide. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video. And if you haven't already done so, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.